Hello, dear viewer, welcome to the fastest Skyrim character ever. Well, technically it's not exactly true. You can use exploits or even more mods than I am using and reach movement speed likely to crash your PC and or console. Nevertheless, this build is all about speed, movement speed, attack speed, thum induced magic speed, speed. We stack quite a few movement speed buffs from a few mods that's already quite exciting. We use some of the lightest weapons with super fast dual power attacks for some extremely efficient super fast damage dealing. We make them even faster with elemental fury. Only one of our daggers is non-enchanted, but you only need one to speed up a dual wielding power attack. So the other dagger, you guessed it, absorbs speed. Speed! And due to some Valkyrie perks, we get a good chance to have a super enhanced slow time shout active at the same time as Elemental Fury. From the enemy perspective, we are basically a blurry line of after image, which makes them bleed real fast for some reason. This is another entry in my collab with my friend PC Outcast. We make builds inspired by the Nine Divines, especially as portrayed in the Winter Sun Fates of Skyrim mod. The link to PCs Kinnereth build is in the description. This here is my idea for a champion of Kinnereth, a scout and a worshipper of nature. He is a saber cut whisperer, a mini druid, and most importantly, he is just insanely fast. Also remember to subscribe and like, notifications, Patreon, yada yada. Yeah, you know the drill. But anyway, he is very fast, and that's because the buff of the followers of Kinnereth in Winter Sun is a nice little 10% extra movement speed. One of many. Let's look at the mods. Of course, we use Winter Sun to worship Kinnereth. Specifically, we want the follower effect, which you can get from day one. The later devotee boon doesn't matter too much for the build, it's a saber cut mount. If anything, a cut riding a cut is a little bit redonkulous. We use Vokri perks, there are some perks there, increasing movement speed, but we also want the speech perks enhancing our shouts and the ones that allow you to recruit an animal to your side. We are a friend of Kinnareth's little creatures after all. We need Summer Mist because it adds a fortify speed enchantment. What else? And we want Ethereus races because with this one the Khajiit will get a speed buff, spend less stamina on power attacks and take less fall damage. We then use classic classes and birth signs to choose the scout class or any class starting with the athletics secondary skill, which means another speed buff. We then use even star standing stones overhaul for that steed stone, which guess what? Yes another speed buff. And then we have triumvirate spells, because there is a spell there enhancing speed, and yes, if you don't like mods, you can simply use restoration loop exploit with summer mist uh, fortify speed, I think, so that would be one mod, but just one, or with any one effect fortifying speed. But this here load order uh, makes for a very enjoyable playthrough, which you can start being much faster than normal, and then slowly work your way to Sonic the Hedgehog the Cat status. Just from being a Khajiit scout with the steed birth sign and then selecting the steed stone, you get a 60% extra movement speed and this is just the beginning, man! For the looks, I used various bits and bobs from modular clothing system. It's an imperfect mod, but it's great for customizing your character's looks. And you should also consider using stock or stock, acrobatics and athletics, or any other mod reintroducing athletics in mechanics from older Elder Scrolls games. It may be completely over the top for this build, but uh, over the top is simply what we do here. So the race, as mentioned, is a Khajiit. Not that this little buff of 10% more speed matters that much in the sea of speed buffs, but in Ethereus we will also spend less stamina on power attacks, which is insane, because our power attacks will eventually start cutting down the cooldown timer of our shouts and deal extra damage derived from high stamina and spread will halve all incoming damage. The attribute spread is 1 to 1 health to stamina. You can consider adding something like 5 level ups to your magicka too, but the spells we use here are all cheap novice and apprentice spells, well most of them, which we don't even need to cast very frequently, they are mostly for the flavor and roleplay of a champion of nature anyways, and sooner or later you will be able to use them without any extra magicka. 
The standing stone is the steed combined with the steed birth sign because that's perfectly allowed and balanced and the deity is, needless to say, Kinnereth. The main skills are one-handed light armor, speech, alchemy, alteration and enchanting. On legendary difficulty it may also be a good idea to bring your smithing up to around 80 and with some late game enchanting and alchemy create a set of fortified smithing items. But armor rating is much less important when you can also easily avoid most damage and the damage you deal will be quite sufficient anyway given your insane attack speed. No surprises in one handed, we want the entire dual wielding branch on the leftmost side of the tree with both ranks of dual flurry to make our dual wielding power attacks even faster. In case of two daggers the power attacks are very fast by default and very stamina efficient meaning you will be able to keep whirling your daggers for a lot of extra damage stagger and with blade dancer even for protection. We add a little extra trick to it, we keep the weapon in our left hand non enchanted so that it can get even faster power attacks from elemental fury. The enchantment in your other hand will trigger way more frequently, that's, that's a neat trick. We also want the power attack perks on the rightmost branch up to Valorous Charge and Crater Maker. As this is entirely about agility and speed we want to be executing that silent roll forward power attack combo which with the Crater Maker has also a chance to drop the targets to the ground. Not that you really need it with your ungodly speed it's just it's just quite cool. It's quite cool. Then we may consider reaching the victory rush perk to restore 100 points of stamina with each weapon kill. Our stamina regeneration will eventually become way faster than what we need for sustained power attacking. So it is rather optional. If you are going for victory rush, go there via the dagger perks of course with only one rank of fangs. In light armor we need fit and training of course and keen senses as we need an enchantment on our head that doesn't go on helmets, only circlets. And then obviously all the mobility perks on the right hand side including evasive sprint and untouchable. Windrunner and untouchable both grant you some extra movement speed, 10% from Windrunner and 15 from untouchable, but the latter will be disabled for 10 seconds after you take a hit. Luckily the finished build is perfectly capable of staying in the slow time mode pretty much all the time, if that's what you want. So simply dodging all incoming attacks will be laughably easy and so the untouchable buff will hardly ever get lost. In sneak we go for the dodge roll and one or two ranks of silent roll. Dodge roll very briefly negates all incoming damage which with our lack of resistance is sometimes very much needed, also useful when traversing trapped hallways. Only one rank of silent movement is needed for the early game assassin play. If you do as I do in the video and stick with the early game gear which weighs close to nothing and therefore affects enemy detection very little, that one rank is going to be all you need to execute some successful sneak attacks. Sneak attack perks in the middle will be most useful early to mid game before all your combos and items are obtained. Assassin play will eventually get completely overshadowed by simply running around whirling your daggers. However the backstab perk in the middle gives you extra damage if you attack an enemy from behind with your daggers. Considering you will also get extra damage from high stamina and how easy it is to get behind an enemy when you are in slow time mode, <laughs> yes, you can deal plenty of extra damage without any serious investment in smithing. However the skill value itself for smithing we could bring it up to about 80 to make sure our steel daggers don't suck, but the steel smithing perk I think should be taken only if you play on legendary difficulty. Alchemy on the other hand is the one craft we need to treat seriously. Stamina regeneration potions are going to be your best friends early on, enhancing pretty much everything about your combat style, making the extra damage from furious strength more reliable, allowing for near endless power attacks and sprinting. But most importantly we want to be able to craft some OP fortify alteration potions. Those actually increase the duration of slow time shout and also improve its magnitude meaning that slow 
slow time will slow time even more. Stimulants of course were also taken and as soon as possible. This perk improves your stamina and magicka regeneration when you are under influence of a potion or food. This is already quite bonkers, but even better, the adrenaline perk will improve your movement speed. <laughs> when under influence, because of course. Initially I wanted to refrain from perking and chanting here, but the temptation to max out on fortify speed and amplify alteration was too strong. I have the moral fortitude of a depressed noodle. So we take mastery, armor enchanter and regalia enchanter. Since we also have alchemy, it goes without saying we are going to create a set of fortify alchemy items under the influence of enchanter's elixir, then create some more fortify alchemy items and some fortify smithing items, and then we craft the final gear. We take all the shout enhancing perks, Scald removes a bit of cooldown with each power attack hit, so very frequently in our case, and the Vazulan gives us a chance to immediately clear the timer after shouting. We do not use any other means of reducing cooldown, we have other things to do with our necklace and the roleplay demands we stick with the blessing of Kinareth instead of the blessing of Talos. Which actually means Tonal Harmony perk will be better for us than for most shout-centric builds. Tonal Harmony heals all three of your attributes by the amount equal to your shout's cooldown in seconds, so the longer the cooldown, the more it heals. This means you are forced to power attack a lot, which you would do anyway in order to remove the cooldown of your slow time and still be able to use elemental fury when slow time is still in effect. Which is an amazing combo considering the already insane speed of your power attacks. Speak with animals and the beastmaster were also unlocked. They are mainly for roleplay and flavor of a nature worshipper. Most of the time your animal companion won't be able to catch up with you, much like the cameraman in third person. And last not least, we want to reach the stability perk in alteration. Much like fortify alteration potions, it will increase the duration of slow time shout, meaning it will last for longer than its cooldown, meaning each time the effect runs out, you can just slow time again. Now here's the item loadout for the complete build. We need absorb speed on our right hand dagger, and of course the left hand dagger is not enchanted. Then we need the ring of the wind, two instances of amplify alteration, one on the necklace, the other on the circlet, fortify speed on our boots, fortify one handed on the gauntlets, and deep breath on our chest item pants in our case. Ring of the wind means another 15% movement speed, and your handcrafted fortify speed boots should reach at least 20. Absorb speed on the dagger is a byproduct of my obsession with gathering all the possible speed buffs. You may use it for something better, I guess. I mean, absorb health with your attack speed would make you pretty much immortal, as if you needed that when nobody can hit you. Jesus, what am I doing to this beautiful game? And yes, Valdor's lucky dagger would also be a great choice, you're welcome, Sean. Deep Breath has a chance of reducing your current shout cooldown to 3 seconds, also doesn't affect tonal harmony. We of course want to use at least three full shouts, slow time, elemental fury and animal allegiance. It is sometimes advised that you use only one word of slow time so that you can uh, use elemental fury sooner. It really depends on how much fortify and or amplify alteration effects you have active at the time. Some triumvirate spells are also involved, mostly again for the flavor, mostly novice and apprentice spells, which you don't need to recast too often, so you don't need to worry about magicka at all. Shadow Stride makes you move another 15% faster, Wild Shape makes you sprint faster out of combat, and it also morphs you into a deer when you sprint out of combat, which is quite cute. Stave of Ferocity will improve your power attacks, in making them reduce enemy armor by 150 points. Not that much, but it can make some difference sometimes. Druid Craft provides you with an abundance of alchemy ingredients, which you can harvest from corpses you cast this spell on, useful as hell for an alchemy build. Create Water Totem will slowly heal you and your allies when near that totem. 
So as you may remember, we had 30% more movement speed just from the starting choices. Now, after all the perks, items and spells are in effect, you can have up to 165 extra movement speed. There is also another possible 100 from stock athletics if you are using that. Once you begin to notice you run too fast for the world around you to load, you will know you achieved the goal of this playthrough. And what do you think, dear viewer? Is, is this fast enough? Because it's bonkers, you know? Back in Legendary Edition with no mods, there was very, very few ways of increasing your movement speed, and I think I know why. Anyway, be a nice viewer and leave me a like if you like the video, or a comment if you have something to say. <coughs> Consider supporting me via subscribe star or some weird buttons here on YouTube, and of course, have a lot of fun with this one. Godspeed!